Hello, in this video I want to show you a very famous book written by a famous mathematician. And it's a really good book. It's called Galois Theory and it was written by Emil Artin. And it's a very thin book. Look how thin this is. It's very, very thin. This is, uh, I believe, a Dover reprint. I'm going to give it a whiff here. It just Ah! And it's a fun book if you know some abstract algebra or some linear algebra. You, you know how to write proofs. You can read this and it's a very, very, I don't want to use the word conversational, but it's written in a very different way. In fact, let's just take a look at it so you can see exactly what I mean when I say that. So let's open it up. So here it is, Galois Theory, Emil Artin, edited and supplemented with a section on applications by Arthur and Milgram. This is a Dover, Dover book. Okay, and then here are the contents. Linear algebra, so it starts with linear algebra, so it helps if you already know some linear algebra. It says here, the sections marked with an asterisk have been herein added to the content of the first edition. Okay, vector spaces, homogeneous linear equations, dependence and independence of vectors, non-homogeneous linear equations, and then they added the determinant section. Field theory, so some of the definitions in this book, as you'll see shortly when we look at the book, when we look at the actual mathematics, you're gonna see are not standard with uh, modern definitions. So that's something to keep in mind when reading stuff like this. This is, I mean, this is like a classic, right? This is old school stuff. Field theory, so extension fields, polynomials, algebraic elements, splitting fields, unique decomposition of polynomials into irreducible factors, group characters, normal extensions, finite fields, Roots of unity, Northern equations, Kummer's fields, simple extensions, existence of a normal basis, theorem on natural irrationalities, and then you have the applications. I've mainly read the, the first couple sections of linear algebra and the first few of field theory. I have not read the whole book, um, but what I have read has been very, I, I might have read some of this other stuff in the back, like near the later, later sections, but it's been a while. So let's read it so you can see exactly what I mean about how it reads. Linear algebra, fields. So it says, a field is a set of elements in which a pair of operations, called multiplication and addition, is defined analogous to the operations of multiplication and addition in the real number system. Sounds good. Which is itself an example of a field. In each field F, there exist unique elements called zero and one, which, under the operations of addition and multiplication, behave with respect to all the other elements of F exactly as their correspondence in the real number system. So basically we're trying to mimic the real numbers. We're trying to generalize the real number system. In two respects, the analogy is not complete. One, multiplication is not assumed to be commutative in every field, right? So multiplication of real numbers is commutative, right? Two times three is equal to three times two. They both result in the same number, which we call six. And two, a field may have only a finite number of elements, right? There are finite fields, and the study of finite fields is very, very important and very interesting and different. So it kind of makes it more fun. More exactly, a field is a set of elements which, under the above mentioned operation of addition, forms an additive abelian group. So abelian means that the addition is commutative, right? So it's, a, it's a commutative group. And for which the elements exclusive of zero form a multiplicative group. Right, so basically that's emphasizing that every non-zero element is gonna have an inverse element, okay? Because that's one of the requirements uh, for that group. And there's an identity which we call one, uh, et cetera. And finally, in which the two group operations are connected by the distributive law, correct? So if you think about it, the distributive law is the, is the key thing that connects uh, addition to multiplication, right? Um, let, let me just, I've got a pen here, and let me just show you. So the distributive law, it's this one, right? It would basically say, the distributive law would say that A times B plus C is equal to AB plus BC. And then you could go the other way as well, right? Um, you could do uh, A plus B times C is equal to AC plus BC. You might say, well, why do you need to do both? Can't you just, you know, isn't the multiplication um, uh, commutative? And not necessarily, right? Not, I used uh, not necessarily, it's not necessarily commutative. So, vector spaces. Oh, what's this? If multiplication in the field is commutative, then the field is called a commutative field. So, commutative field is not something that um, is, 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 is used today. When people say field, they assume it's commutative, right? So, this is an example of what I was talking about earlier when I was saying that some of the terminology is outdated. And that's something to keep in mind when you read any old book. I have 
thousands of math books and a lot of the old books are written very, very differently. Even the language is different. I do think it was a lot more elegant back in the day. Just some of the language in uh, some of the books is very fun. Vector spaces, if V is an additive abelian group with elements A, B, dot, 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 F a field with elements A, B, and for each, okay. So it's gonna define uh, a vector space. Yeah, so it defines two operations. You basically have addition and scalar multiplication there. Then it goes on to homogeneous linear equation. So it skips, it goes through really quick, right? I mean, already like page seven. I mean, look, I mean, it's just, it, it really, it really goes through quickly. Non-homogeneous determinants, I and mean, we, we're, we're done. We're almost done here. Right? Determinants was the section they added, right? And then here, here's field theory. So field theory is also very, very intense. Let's look at the field theory stuff. Extension field. If E is a field and F is a subset of E, which under the operations of addition and multiplication of in E itself forms a field, that is, if F that is, if F is a subfield of E, then we shall call E an extension of F. Yeah. So it's called an extension field. Okay. The relation of being an extension of F will be briefly designated by Okay, so E, and the, notice they use the word E, the letter, variable E for extension. It makes it a little bit easier. So E is an extension of F. It's like a bigger field that contains that subfield F. Okay, that's the idea there. It says, if alpha, beta, gamma, et cetera, are elements of E, then by this here we shall mean the set of elements in E, which can be expressed as quotients of polynomials. Wow, right? So like, whoa, what, like really big leap there, right? So very hardcore. And then we shall call this the field obtained after the adjunction of these elements to F, or the field generated out of F by these elements. I, I like that, the generated terminology. In the sequel, all fields will be assumed commutative, right? And today, the modern, no, the modern way is to assume that all fields are commutative. So, kind of an interesting book, right? And it, goes, it just goes through very quickly. So as you can see, um, you, you do need to, I think it helps to have some background um, in abstract algebra, but it's, it's worth having uh, on your bookshelf. Uh, I've had this one for a long time. Galois Theory by Emil Arten, and I'll, I'll look for it and I'll leave a link in the description in case you want to check it out. Um, what else, what else? Subscribe if you want to. Yep, and I have courses, math courses. I actually even have an abstract algebra course. All of my courses are on Udemy, but if you get them, use the links from my website, mathsorcerer.com, because one, it helps me, and two, I've lowered the price to the bare minimum. So you should always get a decent price if you use my links. But it's an interesting book. By the way, if you're curious, uh, this is the father, or it was, he passed away, I believe. Uh, should tell us here. Yeah, so he was, I think he was born in 1898, and that, this is what that means. If it, there's no date here, that means the author is still alive. And I notice that a lot because I'll, I'll get old books and the author is alive. But, you know, it's an old book, so the author is no longer alive. So he passed away in 62, apparently. I, I believe his son, uh, his son is Michael Arden, uh, who has a book called Algebra, which is a very famous book that was, or I don't know if it's still used at MIT. Um, so yeah, called Algebra. So great, great book. Anyways, uh, this is his father, and this is based on, or these are based on, I believe these are based on uh, the lectures that he gave at Notre Dame. I should say that somewhere here. Hmm. This is in the 19th century French mathematician of Arasti Galois developed the Galois theory of groups, one of the most penetrating concepts in modern mathematics. The elements of the theory are cl clearly presented in this second revised edition of a volume of lectures delivered by noted mathematician Emil Artin. So these are the lectures of Emil Artin. Yeah, at the University of Notre Dame, right here. Where is it? I, I know, here it is, here it is. An unabridged and unaltered republication of the last corrected printing of the 1994 second revised edition of the work first published by the University of Notre Dame Press in 42 as, yeah, Notre Dame Mathematical Lectures. Yeah, Notre Dame's a really good school. Give it one more whiff here. Ah, amazing. Anyways, awesome book. Take care. Keep doing mathematics.